This is an anime recap video, and in this video, I'm going to show you an emo girl named Utina who has always admired magical girls Sulphur, Seo, and Haraku but obtains evil powers from Vanita and transforms into a powerful villain. It all starts on a nice sunny day in a town protected by a team of magical girls known as the Trez Magia. The girls battle a giant monster attacking their town. They activate their magic spells and attack it one by one. Seeing this, the monster gets annoyed and shoots a powerful beam their way. Sulphur, one of the magical girls, activates her powers and manages to block it using a shield. They then try their combo attack, but it has no effect on him, proving that the monster is just too much for them to handle. Meanwhile, a girl watches the battle between the monster and the magical girls from down below. Seeing the power of the monster, all three magical girls decide to combine their power to take the monster down once again. As the crowd below anxiously waits for the heroines to win this battle and save their city, an emo girl, who is a huge fan of magical girls, wishes to be like them herself. After watching the battle, she heads to a nearby area and buys some soda water. She wishes to be like them, and someone from behind says this too. Just then, a weird cat bat-like thing shows up and tells her that she can be like them if she wants. Our emo girl instantly recognizes that the cat bat thing is a cute mascot character who gives a totally average girl the power to transform. The cat bat thing introduces itself as Vanita, and the girl can't believe how suddenly all of this is happening. She gives Utina a star, telling her that she has been chosen. Just as the star begins to transform her, she is very excited and surprised by the sudden turn of events. After the transformation, she looks at her costume and feels very embarrassed, stating that the costume does not match that of magical girls. Just then, Vanita reveals that she is not chosen to be a magical girl but to become one of the villains of their evil organization. However, Utina, who has always admired the magical girls and desired to become like them, rejects the idea and decides to leave. Despite this, Vanita keeps following her and noting all her activities. It reveals that it has done a lot of research on her, including friends and family. It tells her how average she is, even her classmates do not notice her existence. Her grades are average, and instead of focusing on studies in her class, she just keeps on doodling on her notebooks and surfing the web, learning all about the magical girls. All the allowance she gets for the month is spent on buying magical girl merchandise, declaring that due to all these, she is the perfect candidate to become the next evil villain. Utina, hearing all this, still isn't interested in joining the evil organization, believing that the greatest joy a human can feel is knowing that someone needs their help. But Vanita still insists, revealing that she must join the evil organization because it will benefit the magical girls too. She further explains that magical girls only exist because they have an evil organization to battle, and without them, they'll lose their reason to exist. It also informs her that sometimes they form stronger bonds with enemies they're always fighting. Without further ado, it sends the star towards her and transforms her into her evil costume, but Utina still dislikes it. Hearing this, Vanita blackmails her, showing her 220k followers account and revealing that if she does not join their organization, it will post her yummy photos and transformation videos to their account. Before she can do anything, the magical girls arrive and think of her as a villain, quickly deciding to take her down. Our emo girl, Utina, cries for help and tells them that she was forcefully transformed into a villain. Without any investigation, the idiotic magical girls think that she is trying to deceive them and can't believe any of the words she is saying. Utina, shocked at this, wonders what she should do in this situation. Just then, Vanita tells her to use her crop weapon, the Frustino Dominanza, as it contains magical powers. Since she doesn't want to get hurt, she decides to follow the instructions of Vanita. She then touches a small flower with her weapon, and it turns into an evil monster, shocking Utina. Vanita reveals that her crop has some special powers and with this, she can create evil monsters and use them according to her wishes. After capturing the magical girls, she sighs with happiness but then wonders why she is happy, as she is hurting the magical girls whom she admired the most. The flower monster continues to squeeze their bodies and begins to tighten up its grip. Seeing this, Vanita informs her to take the matter into herself, but she denies it, stating that this is enough and wants to let go of the magical girls. However, it again shows her videos and photos, causing her to head towards the group. The magical girls, sick of being squeezed by the flower monster, request Utina to let them go, but she tells them to show their backside. Just then, she takes out her crop and begins beating them from the backside. As they yell in pain, she wonders why she is beating them and wonders if this is a dream, but realizes that she enjoys hurting them. Seeing all this, Vanita reveals that the emotion she felt for magical girls wasn't love, 
but a twisted delight from watching them suffer. The next day, she wakes up in her bedroom and believes that this was all a dream, but Vanita brushes it down, stating that her first battle was amazing but now it wants her to conquer the world. Later that day, Utina tried to convince herself that she admires the magical girls in a positive way, not negatively. Suddenly, one of the magical girls and her classmate, Haruka, notices her and greets her. She expresses appreciation for Utina's care of the flowers, revealing that she sees her every day. Thinking about the monster flower, she bends down to her knees and reveals that she doesn't deserve this gratitude. Haruka tries to get her up, but due to the beating she received yesterday, she hesitates and heads to her class. Later, during their class, the girls change into new clothes, and a girl hit one of the magical girls, Seo, on her back, causing her to fall to her desk. The other two arrive, revealing that they can feel her pain, but Seo vows to find our emo girl and take revenge. Sulphur reveals that the girl who beat them has the same magic as them, and they can't recognize her when she is transformed. Just then, they feel a monster aura coming from the city and leave the class by telling their teacher they need to go to the bathroom. They head to the school roof and say the word transmagia, which allows them to transform into their magical girl's avatar. However, even after their transformation, they still feel pain in their back. Just then, Vanita informs Utina that magical girls are on the hunt, and it needs her to go there and hurt the magical girls. It also informs her that when she says the word transmagia to her crop, it will automatically transform her into her villain costume. She obliges and transforms into her evil avatar while the magical girls defeat another monster. Vanita asks Utina to fight again, but she refuses. However, it shows her a video of her beating the hell out of the magical girls and tells her what her family will think when they see this video and their daughter being a supervillain. It then asks her to turn the mannequin lying around into monsters, and she forcibly obliges. Just then, the monsters once again grab all three magical girls and start tickling them. Seeing them smiling and in pain, she heads towards them and starts tickling them herself. She does that to all three magical girls and asks if they are enjoying this or not. Just then, Seo breaks the mannequin holding her, causing Vanita to believe that Utina still lacks power. So, it asks her to fall back, and they quickly leave the area through a magical portal. Back at home, Vanita observes how Utina is actually enjoying being a supervillain and defeating the magical girls, but she quickly denies finding joy in being a supervillain. The next day, while in her class, Utina thinks about ways to hurt magical girls, but her teacher scolds her and tells her not to sleep in class. After the class, Seo tells the other two that she has some important work to do and leaves. On the way, she sees Utina and asks if she's okay. She even tells her that if she finds herself in trouble, she will help her out. Utina thanks her for being kind to her, and after hearing these words, Seo decides to leave. On the way home, Utina can't stop thinking about evil ways and methods to hurt the magical girls and tells herself that she has to stop doing this. Just then, she sees a shrine and visits there. She prays to God to stop her from doing terrible things to the trans magia and help her get away from Vanita. After that, she decides to return home but sees a book of a girl magazine lying on the ground. At first, she hesitates to open it, but then ends up reading it. The magazine has all the methods written in it which she can use to hurt magical girls. While she enjoys reading all this, Benita spies on her and believes that her power is increasing with her desire. Near the back side of the shrine, Seo cleans the room and the hall, believing that everything is going fine today. However, her fine day turns into a worse day as a transformation magic appears behind. Utina, shocked at her transformation, wonders why she transformed despite not saying the word transmagia. However, Vanita reveals that her desire made her powers burst out of her containment. Just then, Seo arrives and transforms into her magical avatar Azure, challenging Utina to a fight. She attacks Utina with her magical sword, but Utina dodges it and starts running away from her. Azure follows her and tries to capture her, but Utina uses her crop and turns the nearby mask into a monster, capturing her with it. Now, her way is clear, Utina tries to run away but realizes that Azure is in her possession, and she can do whatever she wants with her. Just then, our emo girl heads towards Azure and begins bullying her. Azure tries to use her magical powers, but due to being blindfolded, she can't see where Utina is, and her attack does not hit her. Utina, tired of waiting, goes to her and starts clapping her. She activates her magical powers and uses them on her body, causing her to fall to the ground. 
She uses her hand to clap her furthermore and draws out all the energy inside her, causing her to go unconscious. Before our emo girl can torture her more, she senses the energy of the magical girls and leaves the area, but informs Azure that they will have even more fun in the future. The magical girls arrive and check on Azure, but Sulphur realizes that something is wrong with Azure. At her house, Utina is happy that she was able to play with Azure, but Vanita stops her, informing her that she needs to pick an evil name for herself. However, our emo girl, Utina informs Vanita that she does not want to be a bad girl and does not want to hurt others, including the magical girls. Hearing this, Vanita informs her that it came from a different world where all kinds of mascot characters live, but everyone hates its kind and they did everything to oppress them. Now, they are using the magic powers of the magical girls to kill them. Utina, not believing all this, tells Vanita that magical girls are the heroes of this world and they can't do any evil things. However, Vanita tells her that magical girls are being tricked by the other mascots and got told that they are the evil mascots. Vanita reveals that due to this, it came to the earth to find people who can help them in the fight and save them from the magical girls. When asked why it goes around saying that it has an evil organization, to which Vanita informs her that it wants to protect its friends and for this, it can become a villain. Hearing this emotional story, Utina cries and readies to help them out. However, it turns out that Vanita was lying. The next day, magical girls gather at a school cafeteria and talk about Utina and how to defeat her. Azure thinks about her previous fight with Utina and wonders what will happen if she fights with her again. Sulphur, who is seeing her blushing look, wonders about her fight with Utina and how she changed so much in a short amount of time. After school, Sulphur says bye to the magical girls and heads alone, informing them that she has some work to do. In the meantime, Vanita takes our emo girl to the place where Sulphur is, and after reaching, Utina sees that Sulphur is alone. Not wanting to let go of this chance of playing with her, she activates her magic and uses it on a candle, turning the candle into a candle monster. The monster then grabs her and cuts one of her things with its monster hands. Just then, Utina lights a candle and begins clapping her, putting all the melted wax on her body. Sulphur cries and tells her to stop the clapping, but Utina tells her that she does not want to hurt her but wants her to admit defeat. Before she can do anything else, Sulphur activates her magical powers and destroys the monster body, which was holding her. Shocked at this, Utina wonders how she is able to escape, to which Sulphur reveals that she was holding back just to see all her magic abilities. Sulphur then charges at her and hits her with a powerful punch, but the body turned out to be one of her clones. Sulphur, realizing that she is a loser, asks Utina to give her her name, and before leaving through a magic portal, she reveals that her name is Magia Bazer. After that, our emo girl teleports to nearby her house and feels excited to fight with Sulphur. Just then, an unknown girl, sitting on the roof, sees her magical avatar and blushes at her. The next day, Vanita takes Utina to their evil organization headquarters named Nact Base. It is revealed that she is now a member of the evil organization in Ormida, and it wants her to see every part of it. Utina refuses and wants to go back home. Just then, the unknown girl who was seeing her from the roof arrives and greets her. Vanita reveals that her name is Kiwi, and she is one of the members of the Inormita organization. After greeting our emo girl, Kiwi puts a grenade in her hand and blasts it. To her shock, Utina transforms into her Magia Bazer avatar and successfully avoids the impact. Seeing this, Kiwi challenges her to a fight and transforms into her magical avatar, holding guns in her hands. Seeing her in her magical avatar, Utina reveals how beautiful and cute she is. Just then, Kiwi charges at her, firing hundreds of bullets with her magical powers and sending her flying through the wall making her unconscious. She then sits on her and reveals that she hates magical girls and wants to tell the world that she is the cutest girl in the world, not magical girls. After saying this, she puts another grenade on her and asks why she wants to fight with magical girls. However, to her shock, Arimo hits the nearby light bulb with her crop and transforms it into a monster. She then captures Kiwi with it and holds her inside the bulb. Just then, Utina tells her that she does not want to fight anyone because they are strong and cute. Since they are adorable, she wants to bully them. She even reveals that every time she clashes with magical girls, she sees a new and even cuter side of theirs, which makes her heart do more clapping. After revealing all this, she activates the bulb with her powers and starts clapping her. She claps more and more with the electric shock until the bulb is torn into pieces. Just then, our emo girl, Utina, picks her up and holds her in her arms, revealing that right now, she is the cutest girl in the whole entire world. Kiwi looks at her, and Vanita reveals that everything is going according to their plan, 
and she will soon come out of all her fears. Before leaving, Yutina informs Kiwi that she will see her soon. The next day, Yutina heads to school and thinks about her clapping with Kiwi. Suddenly, Haraku greets her, and before she can say anything else, Kiwi grabs her from behind and hugs her. Shocked at this, she asks what she is doing in the school, to which Kiwi informs her that she just transferred to her school, and will be her classmate, beginning to clap her. Our emo girl, Yutina, then asks what she wants, to which Kiwi reveals that she has no friends and wants to be her only friend. She then takes Utina on a date where they eat lunch, watch a movie, and do some shopping, including buying a toy figure of Azure. Seeing this, Kiwi asks Utina why she fights with magical girls when she loves them so much, to which Utina tells her that when she transforms into her Magia Bazer avatar, she can't hold back, even though she knows that she is doing the wrong thing. She also reveals that she did not want to be a bad girl, but Vanita made her do it. She then asks Kiwi about this, to which Kiwi tells her that she is the cutest girl in the world. But when she posts her pictures on the internet, no one likes them. Instead, they like all the pictures of magical girls and ignore her, causing her to hate magical girls even more. However, one day, while she was doing the clapping photo of herself to post online, Vanita approached her and told her that it can help her to defeat magical girls, and she accepts the offer. After that, she informs her that all she wanted is for the world to acknowledge her as the cutest girl in the world. But now she wants to be the cutest girl in Utina's eyes. Just then, she takes out the magical stars and transforms our emo girl and herself into their villain avatars. Utina wonders how she is able to transform her into her magical avatar without her permission. But her thoughts live short as magical girls make their way into the area. They challenge them to the fight, and Kiwi accepts it without hesitation. Sulphur and Haraku head toward Kiwi while Azure battles Utina. Azure thinks about her previous fight with Utina and wonders what will she do this time. While she thinks about all this, Utina captures her with one of the flower monsters she created from the crop and begins clapping her. She claps her with her hands and ties her with one of the ropes of the flower monster. In the meantime, Kiwi attacks the other two with her magical powers, shooting them with bullets made from her magical pistols. However, Sulphur activates her magical shield and blocks all the incoming bullets. Just then, she runs out of her magic mana, and both the girls begin attacking her. However, our emo girl, Utina, makes it in time and distracts them with the Azure clone, and runs away with Kiwi. After that, they hide in the nearby area, and Kiwi thanks her for saving her life. Utina is happy that Kiwi is alright. Seeing this, Kiwi blushes and asks Utina to give her a kiss, but she refuses, causing Kiwi to take her to the clapping hotel. At night, a girl named Kurisu draws a cat shape on the ground. Suddenly, she sees a cat and starts following her but comes upon a Vanita who talks to someone with his teleportation powers. He informs him that everything goes according to their plan and soon they take over the world. Just then, Kurisu grabs him from his tail and holds it in her arms. Vanita wonders what he should do but then asks her if she wants to join their evil organization, and Kurisu happily agrees. The next day, Vanita sends them a message to come to their headquarters, and they head towards there. On the way, Utina wonders what he's up to, but Kiwi informs her to forget about this and go to the clapping hotel. Utina disagrees, saying that they are here for some reason, but then sees Korisu holding Vanita in her arms and wonders who she is. Vanita introduces Korisu to them and reveals that she will be their new teammate starting from today. Utina thinks that Vanita has kidnapped Korisu, who appears to be a little girl to her, but Vanita informs her that she joined the evil organization with her own wish. Utina, who does not believe in his words, thinks about ways to get Korisu out of this evil organization. But Korisu grabs Vanita, and puts him in her arms, causing our emo girl to believe that the words Vanita said are true and she truly likes him. After that, Kiwi introduces herself, but Korisu does not pay any attention. Utina also tries it, saying that she wants to be her friend, but Korisu also does the same with her. Before she can say anything, Vanita takes out the magical star and uses it on Korisu despite being stopped by Utina who does not want this little girl to fight with Tren's Magia and get hurt. However, the little girl hesitates. Just then, she transforms into her magical avatar and looks taller than Utina. Utina, upon seeing her magical avatar look, feels she is super cute and looks even cuter in her Wonderland dress. Kiwi, jealous at this, tells Utina that she told her that she was the cutest but now she is siding with Korisu. However, Utina informs her that she is still the cutest and looks 1 million percent cuter in her military dress. This revelation causes Kiwi to go blush, but Utina turns around and tells Korisu that she looks like a goddess when she transforms into her magical avatar. Later, the magical girls sense something evil and head toward it. 
There, they find an evil-looking doll, who, upon seeing them, tries to run away. Magenta, along with others, follows it and ends up inside a room, where, upon entering, the door gets locked. They try to open it, but to no avail. Suddenly, the doll they were following turns into a huge monster and starts attacking them. They try to run away but bump into other huge monster dolls, who also upon seeing them, start attacking them. The magical girls attack them with their magic but find it has no effect on these doll monsters. They then run away and hide inside a room while the doll monsters look for them. Just then, Seo wonders what is going on in this weird place but finds Magenta, who is now wearing a suit, heading towards her. She praises her beauty and wants a kiss, but in a blush state, Seo asks Sulphur to help her out. But instead of helping, Sulphur starts calling her her mother. She reveals that she is hungry and then begins clapping her, causing Seo to think about what is happening to her friends. Magenta also joins the party and then takes her to the nearby area. There, they talk to Seo and reveal that they feel jealous because she is prettier than them, causing Seo to wonder what's going on. Just then, Vanita reveals that this is Korisu's power and with this, she can use her dollhouse to trap people and make them do whatever she wants. However, she is still a little girl and has not enough magic powers, which causes the magical girls to come out of her dollhouse. The magical girls, still clapping Seo, wonder what they were doing, but Sulphur gets angry and calls out Utina to fight with her. Korisu, who used magical powers for the first time, feels tired and falls to the ground. Seeing this, Utina puts her on her back and takes her into her house. The next day, Kiwi is bored and wants to go to the clapping hotel with Utina, but she denies it. Just then, they see Korisu walking on the road and greet her. She takes them to her house and shows her dolls, who she plays with. Kiwi finds them super adorable but ends up breaking one of the doll's arms. Utina, our MO girl, scolds her, but Korisu quickly reattaches it with tape. Just then, Kiwi sees a doll with red clothing and holds it in her arms, but Karisu quickly takes it away, causing them to believe that this is very close to her. However, Utina finds it broken and tells her that she knows how to fix it because her mother taught her when she was a little girl. Hearing this, Korisu agrees and gives her to Utina. At night, Utina starts sewing the broken parts of the doll and ends up fixing it up, but it takes her the whole night. The next day, she goes to Korisu and gives her her doll but Korisu feels that Utina has a high fever. She tries to help her out, but Utina hesitates, saying that she is fine. However, she ends up falling on the ground and goes unconscious. Just then, Korisu transforms into her magical avatar and turns her room into her dollhouse. There, she transforms herself into a doctor lady and starts treating the cold of Utina. She first checks her fever and after examining it, puts a hot jelly cream on her which causes her body to get warm from coldness. She then claps her with an injection, and the next moment, she wakes up and her fever was gone. She thanks Korisu after realizing that she used her powers to heal her. After that, they meet Kiwi, and Utina tells her everything, causing Kiwi to believe that with Korisu's help, she can make Utina go to the clapping hotel. She then whispers in Korisu's ear and asks her to do this, to which Korisu agrees. But the next moment, Kiwi finds herself inside a jail room and turned into a tiny shape like a mouse, causing our emo girl to laugh. The next day, Korisu takes her doll and heads to the nearby park. On the way, she sees a cat sleeping on the neighbor's door and tries to pet her, but the cat runs away after seeing her cold look. Suddenly, she sees Magenta, who is now in her human avatar, playing with the children and making a mushroom with sand. She gives the mushroom to one of the children but they all want one for themselves. Hearing this, she agrees to their request and sees Korisu sitting on the bench. She asks the other children who she is and wonders if she wants to play with them, to which one of the children tells her that Korisu never talks to anyone and always plays by herself. Hearing this, Magenta immediately heads there. She then takes out a doll and asks Korisu if she wants to play with them, to which Korisu happily agrees. At night, our emo girl Utina and Kiwi fight with Sulphur, Azure, and Magenta. Utina activates her magic and makes some bugs with her crop, and after that, she traps Azure and Sulphur inside bug jelly which begins to dissolve them. Magenta, who was watching all this, tries to help them, but Utina states that she wants to see their clap look more. Just then, Utina attacks Magenta and does the same with her, causing her to blush. After the battle, they head to the nearby bathroom and start cleaning their clothes. Sulphur is angry that Azure didn't use her full powers and due to this, they got defeated again. But Azure tells her that it was Sulphur who was at the back end. This causes the two magical girls to go for each other, but Magenta intervenes and stops them from fighting. She tells them that they are a team and they will work hard to defeat them next time. 
Hearing this, the two magical girls state that Magenta is behaving like their mother, to which Magenta first goes happy and then believes that she is really their mother. The next day, at school, she gives them lunch which she made with her own hands, causing Azure and Sulphur to believe that she is starting to act like their mother. After lunch, she tells them about her new strategy to fight the evil organization in Ormita, believing that with this strategy, they can finally defeat them. However, she also informs them that for this to happen, they need to do some special exercises. Just then, she takes them to the school gymnastic club and starts practicing. But to her shock, Sulphur ends up hurting her back. Just as she is about to scold Magenta, Kiwi, who was already there with Utina, starts laughing at Sulphur, saying that she is performing a monkey dance. Hearing this, Sulphur gets mad and says that her brain is bigger than Kiwi's oranges. This causes Kiwi and Sulphur to go for each other, but Magenta intervenes and stops them. She says sorry to both Utina and Kiwi, to which Kiwi immediately accepts, but for forgiving Sulphur, she gives them two bottles of energy drink, believing that this will cool their minds. After school, Magenta heads to the nearby park, where she finds Korisu already sitting at the table. There, she begins playing with her doll and acting as her mother, which causes Korisu to feel happy and blush at this. After that, she gives her a bottle of milk and they drink together, but Magenta realizes that she has to go to the grocery store to buy something for herself. Hearing this, Korisu feels sad, but Magenta gives her her doll, and before leaving, promises her that she will play with her the next day. At the grocery shop, she greets the owner of the shop and asks if she has any Romansko left, to which the owner immediately declines. Just then, Korisu activates her magical avatar, which causes Magenta to sense its signal. She then immediately heads to the signal place but ends up in the park, where she played with Korisu a few moments ago. She starts worrying about Korisu's safety but doesn't realize that Korisu is a member of the evil organization in Ormita. Just then, Korisu, in her magical avatar, arrives and reveals that her name is Narolis. She activates her dollhouse, which causes Magenta to head back, but Narolis captures her with her evil doll and traps her inside her dollhouse. There, Magenta calls for the magical girl's help but then realizes that she has turned into a child. She looks around and feels that she is all alone, but then cries, saying that she wants someone to be around her. Just then, Narolis, in her Doctor Lady avatar, arrives and holds her in her hands. Magenta, who is now a baby and has lost all her memories due to the evil spell cast on the dollhouse, believes that the Lady Doctor in front of her is her mother. On the other side, Sulphur buys some takoyaki with taco and starts eating it alone. She thinks about Magenta and believes that she is taking this mother stuff way too seriously. Just then, she thinks about her past when she met Magenta and Azure for the first time in their human avatars. Magenta, who was always kind and caring, started following her, revealing that she wants to be her friend, but Sulphur rejected her request, saying that she is annoying. A few days later, Magenta and Azure, in their magical avatars, follow an evil signal but end up around Sulphur who is beating the mascot-like monster with her bare hands. After the fight, the magical girls ask why she didn't run away from the monster, to which she informs them that she never backs down from a fight. This causes them to realize that Sulphur is a strong girl, and due to this, they ask her to become a magical girl, and that's how she ended up as a magical girl. After revealing this, Sulphur states that it was Magenta's kindness and caring that turned her into the girl she is today. On the other side, Magenta now is a baby, plays with Narolis in her Doctor Lady avatar. She has so much fun but ends up hitting her own back. She immediately apologizes to her mother, saying that she is not a good daughter and can't go to do her own back thing. This causes the Doctor Lady to change her back thing, and our baby Magenta feels happy about this, believing that her mother has got her back. However, she suddenly sees the backs of Azure and Sulphur, believing that they are very strong, but then realizes that they are the magical girls and she is one of them. This causes Magenta to transform back into her old magical avatar look and immediately regain her memories. Not only this, she also realizes that the Doctor Lady is narrowless and was controlling her with her evil powers. Just then, Magenta gets up and asks for her claps, but Narrowless gives her a sad look. She wonders why Narrowless is sad but believes that she was having fun playing with her. Suddenly, Narrowless tries to leave through the magic portal but stops when Magenta asks her to play with her again and become her mother. Seeing this, Narrowless smiles and with a scary look, starts giving her a you know what I mean, which causes Magenta to believe that she does not want to make Narrowless sad and reveals that she can't let her go without a smile. Just then, Magenta, acting as a baby, tells her that she has had enough and wants to get some rest, but to her shock, Narolis begins hitting her with her hands, which causes Magenta to experience a lot of pain and start calling for her friend's help. 
However, Narolis doesn't stop and continues hitting her. After that, she returns to the park and tries to leave through the portal, but Magenta stops her, asking what she wants from her, to which Narolis gives her a smile and leaves. On the other side, Sulphur heads home after eating the takoyaki. On the way, she sees some kids playing as Azure, Magenta, and Sulphur. One of the kids asks the other that she wants to become Magenta too which causes Sulphur to realize that Magenta's kindness and happiness are spreading everywhere. But she gets mad after one of the kids reveals that she does not want to become horrifying like Sulphur. After that, Sulphur and Azure sense a monster presence and immediately head there. There, they find Magenta lying on the ground and in a lot of pain, which causes Azure to realize she fought a hard battle. Magenta, as lively as ever, transforms back into her human avatar and informs her friends that she will treat them with the octopus dish, but they immediately hesitate. The next day, our emo girl Utina, Kiwi, and Narolis attack the magical girls. Utina traps Seo in one of the skeletons she made with her crop, and begins tickling her with it. However, instead of fighting back, Seo begins to enjoy it. Utina thinks that Seo is getting way too easy to catch and wonders what's wrong with her. Suddenly, Sulphur breaks the skeleton in half and frees Seo from its grip. After the fight, Sulphur asks Seo what's happening to her, saying that she used to fight way harder than this. Seo, with a sad look, apologizes for this and walks away, saying she will do her best in their next fight. At the cafeteria, Kiwi is mad that she always gets blown away by Sulphur but vows that she will take revenge for this insult in the next battle. Just then, she tells Utina that she is going on a trip to Onikawa with her family this weekend and they have already reserved the hotel room. She offers her to come with her on this trip, but Utina refuses, saying that she has a lot of study to do. They then head home when seeing Karisu falling asleep. On the other side, Vats asks Seo what's bothering her. She says she doesn't know, she knows she can't keep going on like this, but she doesn't know how to snap out of it. Vats then asks if she still remembers the day when they first met. Seo was covering a little girl when a robot tried to kill her, but she stood up to it despite knowing that her life is on the line and she cannot defeat it. Just as the robot tried to finish her, Magenta breaks it in half with her magic spell and saves Seo's life. With this, Vats asks her to join them and become a magical girl. When Seo asks why her, Vats reveals that Magenta is the only magical girl who is keeping this town safe and she needs courageous allies like Seo. Vats explains that Seo had the courage to save the girl from the monster despite knowing that she will be killed, and so, she is perfect for the role of the magical girl. When Seo says that she is not special, but a normal girl, Magenta transforms back into her human avatar, revealing she is normal like her. Back to the present, Matt states that Seo was incredible back then and he still believes in her, but then says sorry, revealing that he put them with an incredibly tough job and due to this, she is getting tired. He then leaves but before that, tells her to take a little time off to rest and relax, believing this will change her mood. At night, she takes a bath and before going to sleep, begins playing with her toys, but quickly stops after realizing that something is definitely wrong with her. On the other side, Utina looks at one of the posters of Magical Girls and wonders what's wrong with Magia Azure, but thinks that she might have pushed her too far. She takes out a Magia Azure doll from her closet and thinks about her past memories when she was a fan of magical girls and always saw their battles. Now, she is talking with them and fighting them, but wonders if it's a good thing or bad. The next day, Seo goes for shopping just to clear her head but it doesn't help her out. On the way back home, she sees Utina behind some girls who were taking her spot in the line. She scolds them for this and they apologize. She asks Utina what she's doing here, and she informs her that she is attending the Magical Girls exhibition where they have got all sorts of photos and limited edition merch. She asks Seo to come with her, but she refuses and walks away, saying she has some work at home. However, after they all get inside, Seo stops and goes inside. There, she finds all of their stuff, including photos, gadgets, and their magical uniform. She feels this is embarrassing and walks away, but Utina finds it amazing and buys all the limited edition of their merch. After that, they head inside the theater room where they watch the oldest episodes of the Magical Girls. In that episode, a magical girl battles a giant monster and successfully defeats it with her magical powers. While everyone enjoys it, Seo still believes this is boring, so she decides to head home. On the way, she thinks that all the stuff they show on the TV is fake because in reality, everything isn't that bright and happy but then believes that despite all this, she's still a magical girl, a Magia Azure who fights the forces of evil. 
So, she decides to overcome her fears and fight the evil organization in Ormita. She heads to the nearby park after transforming into her magical avatar and calls out Magia Bazer. Utina, as Magia Bazer, arrives and wonders why she's alone, but Azur puts up a barrier and traps her inside, saying that with this, no one will know they are here. Just then, she charges at Utina with her ice sword, but Utina avoids her attack and counters it with the evil plants which she made with her crop. But to her shock, Azure finishes it with her ice spell called Ice Destroyer. Just as she thought that she is overwhelming her, Utina says that she is charging at her like a rampaging bull instead of paying attention to what's around her. She reveals that monster scissors and sends it at her but it didn't have any effect on her, and Azure breaks them off with her ice attack. Seeing this, Utina believes something is different about her today until Azure attacks her with an Ice Age spell which she believed to wipe her out. However, to her shock, Utina comes back from behind and traps her into a panda monster which she created with her crop. After that, she begins hitting her with her crop, and with an evil smile, asks her to gather up her spirit as she wants to enjoy this fight more. The magical star didn't handle this beating and breaks into pieces. This caused Azure to fall to the ground and lose all her senses. Utina asks Azure to get up as she wants more and is not done with her, believing that she can do better than this. But to her shock, instead of fighting back, Azure begins to lick her feet. She says she is too weak and cannot beat Mistress Bazer. Seeing this, Utina, with a scary look, kicks her in the head and grabs her from her neck. She tells her to wipe this disgusting look from her face and ask if she really going to let herself go evil, revealing that Trez Magia are paragons of justice and every little girl looks up to them. She throws her out and tells her that she is a hero and have some dignity. When she leaves, Azure, with hesitation, says that she was not going to join the evil organization but she wants something else. Later, Vanita informs to some girls that Kiwi, Magia Bazer, and Narolis are their new members. The girls with a scary look says that they are not good enough but hopes to meet them soon. Like and comment if you enjoy this video. Subscribe to my channel for more anime recaps. And tell me what anime recap you like to see next in the comments below.